dual purpose wheat and grazing that wheat is kind of unique to the Great Plains. And, and Ryan, let's start out with that. This is, this is something that you won't find in other parts of the country, that, that, that ability to, to put out the wheat and then graze cattle on it. Absolutely. Lot, you know, wheat's very adaptable and it grow, people grow wheat for a wheat crop in a lot of places and people graze cool season annual grasses in lots of places around the country and around the world. But doing the same, bo both enterprises on the same acre in the same year is a little bit of a niche. It's, it's kind of unique to, the, to this part of the Southern Plains where we can have dual purpose wheat, we can grow, we can get a wheat crop and some grazing production on the same acre in the same year. It makes us really uh, efficient and productive and, and competitive, so. How, how does a, 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 a grass-like wheat benefit a cow or, or what, a, another ruminant that you put out on this? Well, the, best, the, the biggest thing is that wheat is a cool season annual grass, and cool season annual grasses are at the pinnacle of nutritive value of, of grasses. Uh, cool, in general, cool season, annual, or cool season grasses or have higher nutritive value than warm season grasses and annuals have higher nutritive value than perennials. And so a cool season annual like wheat is at the pinnacle. We're uh, probably about a month and a half, two months into this wheat crop here and, and, and producers across the state are kind of getting itchy to put the cattle out on wheat. Yep. What advice do you too. have? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I am too, I'm ready to go. Well, w w when should a, a producer go ahead and put the cattle out? There's, there's kind of a couple of triggers that you want to think about, about turning, turning cattle out on wheat. One is you need, you need enough days after emergence to let the wheat uh, plants root solidly into the, into the soil so that when the cattle graze and, and pull on the leaves, they're not going to uproot the plants. You can go out and, and test that in your field real easily. Just pretend you're a cow and just pull some wheat leaves. And if the, if the leaves break off and the, and the plant stays in the ground, you're good to go. So that's, that's rule number one. And then the second trigger is the amount of forage mass that you have available in the pasture. And we will typically recommend that the producers wait to, to stock wheat until they have probably at least 800 pounds of dry matter per acre. Maybe 1,000 pounds of dry matter per acre is a, is a safe target. And generally, that would be somewhere in the neighborhood of wheat that averages four to five inches tall, maybe six inches tall. Um, so in a way you might could test that or think about that. If you can walk out in a pasture and, and toss a softball and it disappears, then you probably got enough wheat to turn out. What advice would you have for a producer who's, who's a first time stalker and wants to go ahead and put cattle out on wheat? Okay. The first, uh, well, I guess there would be several things to think about when you're initially stocking cattle on wheat pasture. First, the, the cattle, wheat's very palatable. The cattle are gonna eat it uh, immediately. The, it's the, you won't have any trouble with that. Uh, once, once you make the decision and that you've got enough forage and, and you know what your stocking rate is and you're gonna turn the cattle out, the biggest problem that you wanna think about is bloat. Right. And when cattle, uh, wheat, Wheat, because it's so nutritious, it's so digestible, it, it has some chemicals in it that kind of cause an issue, potentially cause an issue called frothy bloat. And, and essentially that's where gas gets trapped in the rumen of the animal. They're not able to eructate it a, as normal. And they, they essentially uh, suffocate or could suffocate because of the gas that they're, that they're retaining and not able to, to eructate. So, uh, ways to mitigate that would be to fill cattle on hay prior to turning them. You don't want to really turn out hungry cattle on wheat pasture because they'll gorge on it and potentially get, get that uh, bloat response. So filling cattle on hay, uh, turning them out in the afternoon after they've consumed a lot of, of dry hay in the morning uh, will help kind of ease them onto wheat pasture and mitigate some of that bloat problem. You can also put uh, feed a feed a supplement or a block or something like that that's got a bloat preventative in it to help ease them on and, and transition them on to wheat pasture. We just recorded a webinar uh, last Thursday on the ranchers uh, Thursday lunchtime series. Certainly producers that were interested in digging in deeper into this uh, wheat pasture stocking and, and, and also supplementation decision making process. Uh, could certainly go check out that webinar and get, get some more detailed information on that. Um, I even talked about a, a recent 
research study that we did right here at this research station uh, here in Stillwater that, that investigated that question specifically. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Ryan Ruder. And for more information about the webinar he talked about, visit our website, sunup.okstate.edu.